If Bigfoot is in hiding, what crime did he commit? Are bonsai trees normal size and we're actually giants? Answers to these questions and more on this episode of This Paranormal Life. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. It is Tuesday once again. You are joined by myself, professional paranormal investigator, Kit Career, and this guy over here, professional paranormal investigator, Mr. Rory Powers. How, how are all the ghosts doing in the house tonight? Boo. Boo. Don't you fucking boo me. Don't have no ghosts. hacklers. I know you ghosts. <laughs> Can ghosts cheer? Or Whoa. do they just like boo louder? I think that they're like a really polite audience. They click. Yeah. <laughs> like slam poetry. Yeah. Gotcha. It, they all wear scarves. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You're listening to This Paranormal Life, the podcast where every week we dissect a different paranormal tale, claim, or case and get to the bottom of whether it is true or whether it is false. Um, We're just going to jump right in. Kaploosh. Today, we're going somewhere that is almost untouched by podcasts. Oh, right. And the tiny pockets of people that do reside in this far-flung location have barely even heard of Mark Maron and Joe Rogan, much less This Paranormal Life, sadly. Truly, a time that land has forgot. That can't be how you wanted that to come out, bud, right? We're in Lake Baikal. If I move on, then no one will notice. Okay. F*** I stalled, actually. (laughs) Shit. Stall I f***ed, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. I know, everyone's like, oh man, why do you guys not do this Paranormal Life live? This is why! I have the IQ of a smart dog. I'm scared of the stage and the dark. Standing on a stage, looking into the darkness, is my ultimate fear. Good lord. We would have to light up the audience so insanely (laughs) brightly that they would get retina damage. (laughs) That's right. Today we're journeying far into the wilderness, far beyond the quiet time. Saying goodbye to this poor provincial life and saying bonjour to the unknown. Is it Beauty and the Beast? It's, I guess I have it on the brain, it's, but it's not going to affect the podcast. I hope not. We're in Lake Baikal in Russia, a vast, almost untouched landscape. It's so giant, almost a quarter of the entire world's fresh water is in this one lake. It's the deepest lake on Earth going down around one mile. In winter, it freezes over and is so cold you can watch its waves freeze instantly as they hit the shore. What? I'm going to actually, because that is such a crazy statement, I'm going to show you a video of this right now. That was, ve- yeah, it was a very bold statement. So, you should be able to see this. Okay. Oh my God, that is insane. That is like a, a wave coming in like at a snail's pace, but literally freezing as it hits the land. How is this possible? <laughs> I mean, is this what we're investigating today? Because that's pretty paranormal. This is pretty paranormal already. It's actually not what we're investigating, but I just wanted to set the scene for what a weird lake this is. Yeah, I mean, ended here. It's a yes this week. (laughs) That thing's mad. It's so disturbing. And like, there are men filming this and they're just wearing beanies and filming it with cameras. I'm kind of confused that this is cold enough for water, for waves to freeze as they move but not cold enough to kill a man right like how are these ice beasts still walking the street how cold does it have to be for the blood to freeze in your body that's a great question i know that your eyeballs can freeze i mean it starts with one of the worst things that could freeze your eyes pretty much because you can't blink you're just kind of stuck there like eyes open like when gandalf sleeps <laughs> sitting there frozen in the in this in the snow ideally you would freeze ass first right right because you can kind of deal like you know if your feet freeze up you can't move that's bad if your ass freezes up you know not no biggie but be careful because the floor is icy as hell you don't want to slip and shatter your ass into a thousand pieces (laughs) because you do need your ass you do need it it turns out it turns out could you imagine being in a waiting room and, you know, you, like, stubbed your, your toe really bad. So, you know, you had to take the morning off work. Right. And you're sitting there in the waiting room. And, it's a and really bad reason to take the morning off the, work, but that's for fine. The, <laughs> you're waiting for the doctor to come in. And he's, like, is like uh, saying goodbye to a patient. It's like, all right, Susan, you take care of that and let me know if you have any more mm-hmm. trouble. Um, next up, Mr. Greer, Mr. Greer. Mm-hmm. And you're just yep. standing up ready to go when someone just pushes you down and says, <laughs> can I go first? I shattered my ass. <laughs> I look up to the doctor, I'm like, I really feel you should see him first. (laughs) Well, no, because there's nothing, (laughs) the medical 
profession can do to a shattered ass yeah you should probably go to a plastic surgeon something yeah. like that like an ass doctor do you have the pieces <laughs> it is said that in the local uh, lake sort of tribal lore that the lake was formed by a giant rock falling from the sky and that the tribe's people themselves are descended from one of the lake's mythical dragon beasts very cool it is a deep, extraordinary history. The native people here say that Jesus Christ himself visited this part of Asia and ascended a summit around the lake where he looked down all over it and he blessed the country to the north and then he turned to the south and looking across it waved <laughs> cursed the country he did no, he cursed it that's not very jesus like it doesn't sound like him i feel like they've got him mixed up with someone else he apparently was like jesus he said he said quote beyond this there is nothing and cursed it and that's why they believe that nothing grows on the south bank of the lake okay now of course this may or may not have happened uh, Jesus was not actually born anywhere near there. Uh, Jesus was not known to have traveled particularly while he was alive. Right. Um, but we do know that Genghis Khan himself was born on the, one of the lake's islands. The Mongolian Jesus. Killed a lot of people, actually. Did he? Yeah. I think still a national hero, but killed a lot of people. Right. And he was one of the most murderous bastards of all time. But we're not here to talk about Jesus or even Genghis. We're here to talk about the paranormal. Well, at Lake Baikal, sightings of water beasts, such as the Usan Lobos Khan, or, quote, water dragon master, go back hundreds of years. And these are backed up by records made by early Chinese explorers who called the lake the North Sea at the time. They reported these beasts and referred to them as gods of the lake or dragon fishes. Wow. There are even ancient carvings made of these beasts found on the cliffs of the lake, including a large stone tablet about two to three thousand years old, which depicts a mysterious water monster. The image carved into the stone shows a large lizard creature with a forked tongue, wicked claws and plate like armor. Do you want to see a pic? Yeah, absolutely. You made it sound very detailed. Mm. So this is what they've done here. It's quite cool, actually. Snagged a pic of it, then like bumped up the contrast, you know, put it in black and white, photoshopped it, threw it into VR. Right, I was kind of excited to see the actual cave painting as was. No, 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 no. You're going to see like the Universal Studios <laughs> roller coaster version. Uh, no, I am actually going to show you the original one. They've just put it in black and white. <laughs> what do you see? I see a bird with arms holding an eyeball. That's what it looks like to me. Also, what's behind it? A tiny little snake with a mouth or something like that? Yeah, and that might be another water beast. A smaller, slightly w tinier water water beast. I know what you mean. The so the the head I will concede looks a bit beak like, very it's got beak like. Beak. But I will draw attention to the uh, weird eye thing on the top. He also seems to have scales on the back, like spikes on his back. He also has a forked tongue, which birds don't have. That's true. And he does have a snake slash water beast behind him. Uh, that's an exaggeration to say that that is a water beast ladies and gentlemen that is a one <laughs> one one squiggly line nothing else with a, a fish's head at the top of it to, to there, call there that are, a water beast spikes <laughs> in the mouth there's one spike that what, looks like it was a what a kind mistake. of bird has arms and claws Yes, okay, I admit he does have a beak like a bird, but can I direct you to his dragon-like wings? Birds have wings. Hmm? How do you explain the feathers? <laughs> and his lust for bread? The eggs? Clearly dragons. They're tiny. Baby dragons. <laughs> what do you say about him blowing flames? It's not flames, actually, is it? I think he's coughing up worms <laughs> now that I look at it closely. Those aren't worms, those are sea beasts. <laughs> okay, so this is up to a little bit of interpretation. Okay. Hey, hey, you know what? I'll I'll throw you a bone here. Uh-huh. It's a bird with arms. That's already pretty weird. Thanks, bro. However, those who visit the lake would be lucky if all they had to worry about was ancient sea beasts. All you have to do is not go in the water, if that's the case. But there are more modern paranormal tales about this lake. It is well known for UFO activity. 
There have long been sightings of strange lights hovering over the vast lake, even sightings of unusual crafts. Local fishermen and other such workers tell stories of lights hovering over the lake or exploding out of the lake, out of the water and into the sky. Some have even claimed that crafts descend from the clouds and land on the lake. So so we're five minutes in. Yeah. And we've got sea beasts, right. UFOs, yeah. and Jesus yeah. all in the one location yeah. at a lake that literally freezes as mm-hmm. it hits the shore. Yeah. I'm in. It's crazy. Is there any overlap in all of those things? Oh, like Jesus like descended from the clouds and that would Riding a sea beast. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Is that Jesus? He does have a forked tongue. I don't remember that in the Bible. Think it is. He's walking on water. The lake's frozen as shit. Anyone can walk on it. <laughs> yeah, so there's a, a bunch of anecdotal evidence about um, UFO sightings. But what if I told you that we have the documents? That's right. Rocket fuel, or should I say UFO fuel, was added to these UFO claims when in recent years, Russia declassified a number of Soviet-era documents that describe military reports of unexplainable phenomena around the lake. For example, in 1958, one Soviet Tu-154 pilot crashed into the icy lake's water after allegedly being chased by a UFO. These bizarre reports were compiled by Admiral Nikolai Smirnov. I don't want to sidetrack us, but you have definitely made up that name. What? <laughs> Smirnov? What's his name? And his brother Jacob Grey Goose. Yeah. Uh, all of them super into the paranormal. Yeah. Definitely not alcoholics. And his dad, Mr. Southern Comfort. <laughs> they all answered to Captain Morgan. Leader of the platoon. (laughs) But unfortunately, there are even darker revelations underneath the surface. Like I said, Lake Baikal is the deepest lake on Earth. And in 1977, the Pacis underwater explorer was surveying the lake from 1,200 meters down. Why? (laughs) The lake is weird. Why, Why are you going in it? It's the deepest lake on Earth. Right. So you want to know what's done. So there. don't go in there. Right. Well, that's not a very like scientific. We view already of the know world. what deep water fish are like that, that are in the ocean. Yeah. Imagine what the little grimy bastards that are in the bottom of this ice dungeon are like. Your line of argument here is probably how scientists talked in like the Middle Ages. Yeah. The scientists are like, we've finally done it. We possess the all the technology needed to finally land man. On the surface of the moon. Why the f do you want to go to the moon? All right? Have you seen. S- sorry, have you seen the fish at the bottom of the ocean? That's the opposite. Sky fish. Is that what you're interested in? W- creepy ass fish with those little lights on their head? What we do know is that fish deep underneath the ocean are disgusting and horrible. And then we know that there is a uh, yet to be discovered sort of space layer of fish that are also. <laughs> terrifying and that in between there is a narrow band of livable space and that's where we live that's where we exist yeah so we just can't go anywhere on the thin belt of life below fish above fish killer fish i'm being dragged out of the laboratory (laughs) saying this you all learn you all learn one day (laughs) and one goes to one of the other scientists like what should we do with him he's lost his damn mind feed him to the fishes (laughs) No! Put, put, put him on the ship. <laughs> they blast you straight up into the air. Imagine Neil Armstrong was like, that, you know, that magical moment where it's like, one small step for man, mm. one giant. What the f is that? Oh my god, it's swimming towards me. You're back at the rooms, be like, swimming? <laughs> Neil, get out of there. Oh god! <laughs> That would be so boring if you traveled all that distance. Like, you, you did the whole, like, Elon Musk six months in a tiny pod to get to Mars. Oh, we found life on Mars. Oh, my God, no way. Yeah, it's a little f- fish. We tried to eat it as well. It's not even tasty. It's nasty. Yeah, it was weird and bad. We call them shit fish. The only thing you could do here is just sleep and hunt shit fish all day. <laughs> I think we're going to head back. We'll see you in 15 years. <laughs> It's been a washout, honestly. I, I did watch a show years ago about, you know, what would life look like out in the galaxy and in the solar system. Somewhere like Enceladus is a hotly talked about option for there potentially being life because it has 
sort of a, a hot core but a frozen outer layer so they believe that it could like be like me maybe what ice cold exterior right but then once you break that down ooh, mama spicy on the inside right once you get to know me i will burn spicy. you up oh so bad on the outside and bad on the inside. worse on the inside arguably and then just in between the two a thin layer of like decency like the birds baby we live on a thin line i'm the boy you love to eat i will freeze your ass and burn your dick that's your tinder bio <laughs> the boy you love to hate that alone is just nope so I hate you then. No one likes hating you. We just hate you. <laughs> yeah, so this underwater explorer in the 70s was examining the lake from 1,200 meters down. And at one point, just about the scariest possible thing that could happen, happened to its crew. The lights aboard the Paces cut out completely at the bottom of the lake. Oh God. They were plunged into pitch black on almost a mile under until... <laughs> A beam of light blasted out of the lake's floor and illuminated them fully before disappearing a couple of seconds later. Suddenly, their lights power back on. We're almost a mile underwater. What just lit us up? Who's down here? It's actually... Beasts, UFOs? <laughs> it's one of them, right? That was like a small fact left out of the Bible. That's like, you know, you hear about they had like gospels that were left over from the yeah. Bible and they were like, no one can know about these. And they dropped them into Mordor or something like that so no one could ever read them. Well, that was like the gospel where Jesus had gills. I feel like there's there's, en there's enough going on. Yeah, they had them all lined out and they were like, we got to lose like a couple thousand words yeah, for the word count. Listen, Matthew, John, Peter, writing's incredible. You guys are luminaries, but listen, this is the- Listen, you, <laughs> Aquatrium, uh, your your bit was shit. Your bit was really bad, really water-based, really. Matthew's like, hey, come on, man. It was it was Aquatrius. It wasn't that bad, man. It was kind of out there. He always talks like this as well. So did you guys really like it? Can we get a translator in here? This is a pain in the ass. So did you guys like the water stuff? You're doing it with your finger. You don't <laughs> have to do it. We get it. You're from underwater. Fine, I'll just... Sorry. <coughs> I'm just oh, leave Jesus. Then. You're not even doing it very well. It doesn't sound like you're underwater. Oh, I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, go, on, go underwater one time if you love water so much. Well, I mean, actually, you can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Aquatry is the lost disciple. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a big ask to believe all the miracles, but to believe that, like, Jesus, like, fought that, like, epic battle, like... In Atlantis, that's like a lot for people to try and wrap their heads around. Yeah. Aquatius, what if we just say he he walked on water? Best of both worlds. The properties of the land, but on the sea. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good, good. <laughs> that explains it. Yeah. Yeah. This team were wondering, what the blue hell lit us up down there? And they would get an answer just five years later, but an answer that, just? Would, that would raise more questions than it would solve. It's 1982 and the Navy are conducting routine training on the lake surface. It's pitch black because it's more dramatic that way. The naval boat is lighting the water's surface just with a spotlight and a number of divers jump overboard, disappearing into the night. Well, an hour passes and others in the boat are looking at each other. Hey, they should have been back on the boat by now. And they look into the water and sploosh! A couple of divers re-emerge. <gasps> You can't breathe down there! <laughs> <laughs> what? I thought, I thought you could breathe down there! <laughs> you were down there for an hour! <laughs> That's so impressive! <laughs> That's incredible! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Gravity, it doesn't exist! <laughs> Not down there! You can't hear anything! I was trying to talk to you from down there, but no, that of course that wouldn't work! <laughs> There's skyfish in the water! <laughs> God, not this guy again. <laughs> yeah, the guys in the boat shout out, Where are the others? Well, the others would never be seen again. The divers that did survive that night told a bizarre and disturbing story about what happened down there. They said that once they got to around 160 feet down, they encountered humanoids. Oh, God. Dressed in silvery suits. It said that three divers died trying to pursue the humanoids and another four were seriously injured these are military documents right they're not saying that these humanoids were aliens or something 
they're just like oh there's some kind of psychological cause you know these guys they, they are they it was like a mermaid sort of situation they thought they saw something they went off into the distance and died drunk. right um but these divers know what they saw. They saw their own goddamn men get taken away by these humanoids or injured. That's crazy. Because again, as you said, you know, these are uh, military documents. Yeah. So they're not even going to use the word. They're going to be like um, uh, three soldiers, MIA, yeah. uh, KIA, totally. little codes like that. Uh, they're not going to be like three soldiers were blasted through the heart by a glowing trident. <laughs> like they're not going to say what exactly what happened. It'll be like the technical words for it. Sebastian the f***ing crab <laughs> legit chopped one of our boys' heads off. Flounder did a U-turn, was slapping them all across the face with her with her little fin. Little Nemo swam down some guy's throat and yanked out his heart. Swam out his bloody lungs and said, "You found me, bish." <laughs> We don't understand English. We don't know what that means. That's just what he said. But yeah, extremely disturbing. This is declassified documents, people. Right. By the military. They. It was a classic, you know, CIA. Um, well, not a classic. <laughs> classic. Very unique. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a classic dump of like unidentified shit. They're just like putting it out there 30 years later. We don't know what happened that day. Right. Someone else figure it out. I appreciate you know, that. Becomes uh, public domain sort of stuff. The real question here is, could these have been otherworldly beings? Could they have been aliens? Did, do they have an underwater lair? We never think about it normally. But one Russian UFO expert at the time was quoted in the paper as saying 50% of UFO sightings happen around bodies of water and another 15% or so take place around lakes specifically. Huh. So UFOs obviously have some connection to water. That blew my mind when I read it because that's n maybe people did think that back in the 80s or 70s. Yeah. We definitely don't think that today. Absolutely not. I don't the connotations think with UFO sightings are uh, major cities. Yep. And the desert. Even, even deserts. Like the opposite of water. Yeah. Dry. Is it possible that these visitors are coming from a liquid planet? Why, why, if they were coming from a liquid planet, why would they go to water? Because they breathe underwater. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Actually, yeah. Because Jesus, what's more... You're going to call me out on it like that? Because what... <laughs> or you seem really perturbed I'm just by just pissed because I thought I made a good point. Now you took it away from me. I'll edit. Now I'll, I don't have... I'll edit in your point to be good. Wait, I'll just record now me being like, thinking it was a good point. Let me edit this bit in. Right. Obviously, dickwad... They came down to the lakes because they breathe water. Good old CO2 asshole. Edit that in. When you ask me why they would come to water. So edit in you making my Shit, point really aggressively. Yeah, but that, not against me though. Don't make me answer myself. Make it so you, make you the dick. Make you the dick because I don't want to be the dick anymore. Yeah, so... Every week that I edit the podcast, you always send me the same note, make you the dick. And I'm like, I don't care how long it takes. And I don't I, care I, if we have to redo the episode. If you weren't such a dick on the episode, we wouldn't have to change it. And I just reply, shut up, asshole. And then reply to that. Don't make me the dick in that email. In this email. Yeah. yeah I'll do that. I'm just going to move on. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear more. <laughs> You twat. <laughs> <laughs> and there is actually one video of like uh ufo evidence but you know uh, i know you're gonna shit on it so i don't know if even know if i'll show you no so. i'm excited I'm, I'll, I'll check it out uh you're just gonna you're just gonna do the usual like just like shit all over it because it's like not that believable or something yeah well <laughs> i'm a little worried how much you're putting it down before showing it to me yeah well like, what resolution I think is the video? It's good. What resolution is the video? It's, it's two by one. Is that is that a real resolution? Is that a pixel? It's two by four. It's a piece of wood. <laughs> I'll I'll show you it. Okay. And if you lay into it, I'm gonna edit that out because honestly I can't take getting shut down anymore in the podcast. So Okay. Just try and see like a positive side of it. I mean on this podcast we, we go in with open minds. Always with an open mind. So this was filmed uh, sort of on the, in winter, uh, ar around the lake. 
and I think you're going to be disturbed. It's a video on the Telegraph, so that's already a good start. It's not just a YouTube channel. Yeah, so we've got some sort of debris here and then some kind of humanoid. Oh my God. <laughs> what is that? I don't know, dude. It's pretty disturbing. <laughs> what? What is that? In in everything but color, folks, we are looking at the limp body of a full-on gray lying here in the snow. I'm glad you can be honest about that. I'll I'll lay it down on the table. Now, on top of these claims, I we have a whole host of others. Boats have gone missing, Bermuda Triangle style. Things are never seen again. There are mysterious ice circles that form on the lake itself. Look at these mysterious circles that form on the ice. Okay, that's that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. That's the best thing you've shown me this whole And a bunch of other things. Episode. But I know that we should focus on what we have evidence for. A sea dragon and UFOs. All right. Thoughts. Okay. Okay, let's break down this this case. Uh, well, you know, one, one block at Please a time. Please do, because I have no idea what's going on. All right, what we're dealing with here is a lake that its waves... Turn, uh, first off, why does a lake have waves? Huh? Riddle me that. Because it's the, like... Well, it's not the that was a like rhetorical ever, a question. Wait till my conclusion is done. And edit. Don't make me the dick in this. Please. Uh, second question. So you know you're being All a All right. <laughs> Obviously, I do. I'm not an idiot. I'm second, just rude. <laughs> second point. Ice is the most paranormal element of all. And here we have a whole lake full of it. Obviously, something is going on here. Right. Well, frozen lakes aren't like... I mean, they're pretty common, actually. Right, but as I said, ice being the most paranormal element of all. Right. And we have a whole lake of paranormal going on right here. Uh. To the point, I don't know many lakes where they're, it's so freaking cold, aka paranormal, uh. that the waves are freezing, paranormal stasis, as I right. call it, as they crash onto the shore. Yeah, I, I mean, you know that the North Pole is entirely ice. Mm -hmm. So the North Pole isn't actually entirely ice, and it's like a whole continent. Let's move past. Why that. aren't we there? But I will concede. Yes, the uh, the waves freezing on impact is uh, at least paranormal. At most, science. Right, right. Well, one of those doesn't matter on this podcast. So move on. Oh, science. Good to see you again, old chump. Uh, why don't you check uh, this out over here? It's the window. Whoosh. Close the door to make room for the paranormal. That was you. Is it cold in here? Freezing my ass off. That was you in science class. <laughs> uh, Rory, you've missed the last six classes. Here's mm -hmm. all the notes from the last six classes that you're going to need. Oh, thank you or, so much, uh, yeah. Professor. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I just take these over? Um, sure. So if and I could just see if all the science could and... get out the window. Wow. <laughs> Make way for the paranormal. I open up my vest. It's full of spiders. Oh, my God. I think spiders Holy are paranormal God. for some reason. They're definitely creepy. <laughs> All of a sudden, the frogs in the biology class are going mad. We've got a frog-spider war in our hands. And I'm at the heart of it just going, is this not paranormal? I could explain to you why <laughs> spiders aren't paranormal. <laughs> You're like, how do they work? <laughs> I go, my children, get him. And all the frogs and the spiders are going towards him. He's like, okay, okay, this is this is paranormal. I Even admit this. more paranormal. <laughs> this is weird. Uh, I think that was my conclusion. Wow. Spiders. Okay. Right? Wait, what was the, what was the question? Is the lake real or something? Yeah, I don't know what I think. You're so busy writing a conclusion. You didn't <laughs> come to your own. Ironic, isn't it? It's these beautiful. days. So busy investigating the paranormal, you never really investigated yourself. Hold hmm. on. <laughs> Just because it's taking me a minute to come to a conclusion doesn't mean I don't know who I am. <laughs> Spent so long uploading the podcast. You never downloaded love <laughs> into your life. Huh, Mulvana? You were so busy bit torrenting porn. You never bit torrented a girlfriend. Hey! <laughs> All right! You've crossed the line, sir. That's my personal life. So busy jacking it. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I've presented some evidence. Um, and as always, we've got to come to a hard and fast conclusion as to whether this is truly paranormal or not. We've definitely... I think I was surprised in my own investigation that there was any evidence for uh, the paranormal claims or in Lake Baikal. It's definitely fascinating, the um, declassified government documents right um we do have of course the ancient 
writings of the local tribes people and their claims of water beasts, as well as modern claims of UFOs flying all over and even Jesus making an appearance, frankly. The only problem is that when it comes to anything more than sightings, anything more than a quick photo of a, like a green light hovering over the lake, right. um, things start to dry up pretty fast. I mean, the video of the gray there wasn't the most convincing thing I've ever seen in my life. It was, no. The most convincing aspect of this tale is the, um, the Navy divers who saw the humanoids underwater. Yeah. It took the stories like level of paranormal from like a five to like a 12. I mean, the consequences of if that's true are so beyond insane that I feel like we need some more supporting evidence for that. Yeah, it would literally change the history of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> if true. If true. So I might like a picture. Yeah. Like, like more, more than one anecdote. Right. That's it. It's, it's kind of, there's a lot going on here. There's one of these locations where there's a lot going mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of it is very convincing. You know, these declassified military logs, stories from locals about being blinded by lights, seeing UFOs, these circles that have been documented on the surface of the ice. Granted, this is the same location and the same people that are telling us that Jesus was at this lake. Right. So you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt. And even when it comes to eyewitnesses, as we established, we are in a place where people's eyes are being frozen open. They cannot sleep. They are delirious. <laughs> you hear all these stories about ghost ships from the pirate, from the drunken pirates with scurvy and seawater in their eyes. Mm, the they, bad combo. They weren't even on a boat. Like, they were just on the beach. The legendary Kraken was a mop and bucket that they fell into one night after That's drunkenly right. passing out. Davy um, Jones locker, that was just a regular locker that people <laughs> got locked in. And he got stuffed in by the jocks at his pirate school. Jesus, pirate. Can you imagine what a teacher looks like at pirate school? Christ. <laughs> so, as I said, you know, with those kind of witnesses, you need to... You need to take everything they say with a, a little grain of salt. Yeah. I the think salt melts ice. Boom. That was my conclusion. What? Salt melts ice. So if you take everything they say, their icy little breaths with a grain of salt, the truth will appear once the ice has thawed. You need to stop. I know you're doing like Ending a poetry class. And with a bit class. of poetry, yeah. yeah. I know you're doing a poetry class, like I said doesn't work with the podcast don't don't really try and like shoehorn it in like that okay well if you think it works then it works i don't if you think it doesn't then we won't, well i'll we'll do a different one then no. i'll do another one about fire okay go all right um uh all right this is if you're so eager to prove that the poetry will work for a conclusion instead of just a regular yes or no yeah fine this is uh my burning rose okay by roy powers <laughs> this is my conclusion to the episode yeah you really put me under pressure here. Yeah. I'm really bad at these when you... when you, It's hard enough with pen and paper. Um, uh, upon thine window, sunshine doth break. Good. Upon mine face, mm -hmm. your your stare does take. Mm -hmm. Too much of thine time. Right. Too much of mine rhymes. Okay, forced. It's the, <laughs> it's the implication that she's taking up too much of my poetry. Oh. Because I'm obsessed. This is almost nothing to do with the podcast at this point. <laughs> You haven't mentioned the lake or in fact you've done the opposite. You're talking a lot about fire. <laughs> in in thou hot desert, mm -hmm. thou do burn. You're starting over. Upon the sand <laughs> where the cactuses yearn. It's surprisingly good, I'll be honest. <laughs> to these ends we will never know. On this week's podcast, it is a no. <laughs> so just thank you. You, you do a complete 180. We have to conclude with a poem every time. Bravo, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a no for me also. Ah, oh, shit. And a poem? Do you want to do the? Do you want to do a poem? Or I feel like I do a poem. You do a poem. This is a safe space. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'll. I'll so start when you're ready. Um, but soon, because okay. I'm time is of the essence. So on the lake. Slow start. On the lake. Repeating. Uh, it's an F now. Just to let you know where you're at. Right. It's okay, a hard okay. fail. On the lake, Jesus did take his first steps right. to icy baby. depths. Oh, 
humanoids. Strong start. He did find. Okay. And curse them all. Big change. Da, na, na, na. Da, <laughs> all uh, right. Tribesmen paint into the snow. This, week, this week's own mother <laughs> no. <laughs> Brought home in true style, brother. <laughs> Donut across the finish line. It's an A goddamn star, star, star. To reiterate, it is a no today. We, Double no. The evidence so far over the last two to three thousand years um, does not seem to be enough to say that this is truly paranormal certified in the Guinness Book of Paranormal Facts. Unfortunately, not. Um, but I would love to keep an eye on this one. There seems to be, you know, evidence around this lake popping up every now and again on the papers. So we'll keep a close eye if there's any UFO spottings. Absolutely, dude. There, there are no two words that turn me on more right. than declassified documents. My God. Oh, I'm getting hot just thinking about it. Yeah. So the more we can do on declassified military documents, the big trio, the the better. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to move forward into this, this territory of paranormal unknown. And if you worked for Soviet era government, do let us know if you saw humanoids or heard stories of humanoids underneath Lake Baikal. Send them in to thisparanormallifepodcast at gmail.com. As always, if you enjoyed the podcast, you can hit us up on the socials. We're at twitter.com forward slash this paranormal life and facebook.com forward slash this paranormal life. As always, the secret society is where the truest tried and tested paranormal bastards hang out and uh, share theories and, and stories about um, their own paranormal experiences. It's true. Uh, so that's a good place to check out if you can't get enough of the pod. We don't run advertisements on the podcast. So the best and only way to support us is by checking out patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life, where from just two bucks a month, you can get access to show notes and uh, you can see the video of the uh, gray for yourself, the circles in the ice, the water beast with smaller water beast behind it. Very convincing. I'm, I'm going to blow your mind here, guys. Five dollars a month. Yeah. And that's dollars. So if you live in the UK, that's what, like three pounds? I think it's like 50p, to be honest with you. Pound is strong right that's now. Pound is strong. <laughs> it's not strong if it's 50p, by the way. That's so weak. What? That's weaker than it's ever been. Let me look at my bank balance. I thought I was really, really... I was looking in dollars. I thought I was doing really well. How much did you think you had? I am in the hole. How much How much <sighs> is on there? Whatever. It's, it's like... Like you know, like six six digits or whatever, but that's six digits. That's where's the decimal point? Uh, it's a well, it's like six digits, but like minus. So like, My, you know, the minus is bad. That's a bad symbol. The good thing is Brexit's coming up. Pond's gonna be strong again, brother. We're gonna be we're gonna be making dollars. I'll tell you that much. Pe- so you, people are gonna be living like kings after that bad okay. boy drops. Not sure that's how you get out of the negative. What Brexit isn't how you get out of. Your overdraft. Listen, I I watch a little movie called The Big Short. I'm actually betting against myself. I don't think that's... Is if that I fail, I win big. <laughs> if I win big, I fail massively. My, I got a bet with my bookie that says I'm going to go bankrupt by 27. I'm going to lose that bet. Anyway, from five bucks a month. Yeah, you can get... Ac- which, I yes, I think is around three pounds something or other. You can get access to bonus episodes a whole a whole backlog of bonus episodes that's right if you you know if if you listen to an episode of this paranormal life and you're like oh my god that went by so fast yeah i wish i wasn't caught up i wish i had a bunch more episodes to binge for five bucks one month you get access to a whole backlog of bonus episodes we're talking about hours of bonus content here people it is true just waiting to be digested why not check it out and above that we actually have merchandise and other things so do check it out as always we like to take time at the end of every episode to thank those who have supported us on patreon and that's what we're gonna do right now let's go so thank you to james webster Webster Dictionary definition of James is one generous bastard. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> nice so much dude. for supporting the podcast, brother. Uh, you're making the podcast possible. I'll tell you that much. So, so thank you. Thank you also to Nathan Eckert. Nathan, is your neck hurt? Because I'm giving away free massages, brother. One on one, not sexual, but very intimate. Oh. If you're interested, hit me up. 
Uh, and thanks for the Patreon uh, donate subscriptions. What do they do? They give us money or something? Right. You thanks seem, for that. You seem really hung up on the, the massage thing. Well, that's the important thing is oh. if he wants the massage or not. Okay. He actually lives on the other side of the world, so I don't think it's going to be uh, an issue Off the or table, possibility. Then. You get massage? I'm fine. Okay. Later I, then. No. Sorry. No, that's not what I'm fine <laughs> means. Thank you. I have lit the candles and shit okay. already, so. Yeah, that's fine. Just waste of candles is the only thing. <clears throat> Thanks so much to Joshua Pirate. Well, if it isn't Posh Josh coming down to the slums of the paranormal peasants, riding on his high horse from his ivory tower. Oh, it'd be a shame if we got, got you know, some mud on your horse. Oh, no, your beautiful white horse. Oh, wasn't that be- Oh, he bucked me! Well, holy shit, Jesus. your arm is- you- Oh, that is a compound fracture. That oh. bone is out of the skin. Josh, did you Woo. teach him to kill? Jesus. You you posh bastard. That horse is, like, classist or something. I, I think- He's it- only kicking the poor people. Yeah, it got angry when it saw you. <laughs> Granted, I do smell like shit, and I have a lot of hay in my pockets to dry them out. Granted, I was trying to eat him. <laughs> uh, but thank you, Posh Josh. Thanks, Posh Josh. For supporting the Patreon. Thank you also to Damien. Well, thanks, Flamin' Damon. Flamin' Damon is one of the um, world's most eminent arsonists. He's been on the run for a long time, but a close friend of the communes um, because sometimes, you know, if we've got a, a rival commune moving in our patch, you know, we just need to, you know, light a couple matches in the wrong places, if you know what I'm saying. Exactly. So it, you're referring to in our own commune. We don't we don't burn anyone else's commune down. We burn down our commune and start a new cult. Yeah. We, you, no. We burn down our cult. Com- the commune. We burn down our building and move on to a new cult. Cult. We gotta move on. You said cold again. I said it again. Louder, I think, that time. Woo! Editing this one out. Thanks, Flame and Damon. It's definitely a not commune. a cult. What same thing. Let's just call it that from now on. Camp not a cult. Because I feel like it needs to be black and white right on the front so people don't get scared off. What's more friendly than a big old sign saying definitely not a cult? Thank you also to Erky Lepra. Erky, Erky, Erky! Lepra in the house! <laughs> Yo, what's up, guys? It's Erky, 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 Lepra. This is the remix. Right. The remix, thank you. Thank, 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 thank you. Erky, Erky, Erky. Erky. That <laughs> last one was her name. It wasn't What was the original, like, pre-remix? Was just, thank you, Erky? <laughs> Basically, it was okay. just that sentence. Cool. Thank you, Erky. Thank you also to Ryan Jimerson. Every morning when I wake up and I think, what do I want to do? I'm always faced with a dilemma. Gym or son? And I don't want to tell you how I live my life, but I'm pretty jacked. And my son's sad as shit. <laughs> sad and weak. Because <laughs> he doesn't get to work out with his old man. I banned him from the gym. So Ryan, I don't know what the relationship is between you and your, and your, and your son, but Christ, I hope it's better than mine. Thank you, lastly, but not leastly, to Bridget Wilson. This is one of my favorite listeners, because whenever life gives her a problem, she builds a Bridget and gets an over it. Then walks down the street, finds the paranormal peasants, and bing, one gold doubloon straight in the bucket. Bridget. Classy move. Your structural integrity is 100%. I appreciate... I'm doing another bridge thing. Okay. Right. Uh, I appreciate your support. Again, like a bridge thing. Uh, And I... And thank you for allowing me to cross the river of life. And thank you for making it financially possible for me to live under a bridge. That's not related to the bridge thing. That's just my life. That's just my life. Uh Uh-huh. Thank you to everyone we've shouted out today and everyone we are yet to shout out. Um, If you haven't heard your shout out yet, that's because it's coming. Um, We did say on the previous podcast, if you think you're, if you were an early adopter and you think we've missed it, do let us know. Um, We're more than happy to, to, to go back. We think we've got everyone, but it always, there can always be slip ups. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Keep tuned in because we will be back on Tuesday with yet another paranormal tale. Bye bye.